normal Superman story, morally confused, communist race, Soviet Superman story, son of a bitch, count me in. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for the DC animated film Red Sun. This is the DC animated film based on Mark Miller's comic. It's actually one of my favorite interpretations of the character. Aside from All-Star Superman, which is based on the actual Superman, but it's kind of like a one-off graphic novel, my two favorite interpretations of Superman are Red Sun and Bruce Timm's interpretation of him from Gods and Monsters. The idea of the all-American, good-hearted, free-willed Superman is cool for some people and sometimes it works in small doses. I do like his camaraderie with Batman and his view, his moral, his leadership of the Justice League, but I've never found Superman to be all that compelling in terms of just what he is. He's just a super powered, overpowered, never can be beaten hero who's just doing the right thing. You add some moral complexity, some possible alternative shifts to his core, to his moral standard, You've got me interested. And Red Sun is one of my favorite one-off graphic novels. I remember going over to one of my cousin's house for a Christmas dinner and my fiance's mom had given me the graphic novel and I know I was supposed to be interacting with the family but I was so engrossed in the story that I don't think I ever stopped until I was done. And that same compelling nature of storytelling is still in this film. It's kind of point for point for the graphic novel as far as I can remember. I think they have shortened a few things things here and there for lengthwise. I did like seeing Superman in a Soviet nation. We didn't really get to see him raised on Soviet values, but we see him enacting those as his adult self. We see the corruption, the change in power, the willingness to do evil for supposedly the right thing that he sees through Stalin, and then he himself takes over and becomes the leader himself. We see alternative versions of Lois Lane, Lex Luthor, and Brainiac, the Green Lanterns, even Russian Batman, which I actually don't like the Russian Batman in this. I feel they didn't really give enough time for his character to be given any justice. Admittedly, he's not in the comic as much either. But that being said though, I did enjoy the pacing of this. They keep a lot of the novel in the film. They do keep the pacing good. It doesn't feel bloated. You're always engaged and you're always interested in Superman's moral conundrums that he comes across. That conflict between his good-willed, ingrown nature to the Russian values, the Russian hierarchy, the Russian way of life that he's been raised to believe and to follow. The animation's pretty decent. It's not crap. It's not great, but it's not poop, I guess you could say. It's pretty decent, I would say, for considering that this film came out, what, this year or last year. The voice acting's okay. I feel like everyone was voiced by the same person on the Russian side. I know that's probably not the case, but I feel like Batman and Superman were voiced by the same people. But it, that's just for me. I think that the voice acting's okay. It's not exceptional. I think that the guy who voices alternate Lex Luthor in this was pretty decent. I did like that. The only thing that I've always kind of found a little bit odd is just Lois Lane's willingness to stay with Lex. I understand that Lex is actually putting his commitment towards fighting Superman as a means to better humanity. This is literally if Lex was actually a good person, just the same drive, the same determination, the same ego. But Lois is just so willing to go along with it. She says she doesn't even see him for months, sometimes years. I know in the graphic novel it gets even worse. Apparently he's in space at one point, which they didn't go there in the film. If I'm correct, that does happen in the graphic novel and I was kind of hoping for that because the whole Brainiac character, I didn't like how they use Brainiac and Superman uses Brainiac. It's kind of like the flip of the tables of what we're used to for these two characters. But in the end, I think Red Sun is a pretty good adaptation. It takes away a few things, but at the same time, it does keep that same same moral complexity, that change of the hat for the character that we all know. So I think that for those who have never read the comic, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, you're going to get pretty much the exact same thing you would get from the graphic novel, but always I would suggest read the graphic novel because there's a few other things in that book that aren't in this film, particularly a little bit more about Russian Batman and a little bit more about Lex Luthor. So in the end, I think it's good. It's definitely better than some of the DC animated films that I've seen in the last while. I just have stopped keeping up with the universe, which apparently ended with Apocalypse War, which I've been told that I need to watch all of them to really understand everything, but I don't know. I didn't... I didn't... <sighs> 
know, maybe I'll give it a try eventually. In the end, I'm gonna give Red Sun a 4 out of 7. It's a good adaptation, but admittedly, this will collect dust on my shelf. I may show it to one other person, but aside from that, I don't think I'm ever gonna watch this again. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Tell me what you guys thought about this. What do you think? Do you think it's a worthy comparison to the graphic novel, or do you feel it deviated too much? Let me know. It has been a while since I've read it, so I just want to make sure if I got anything wrong, I want you guys to let me know. Anyways, that's all for me, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.